Yeah, I was on the planning committee. Um, Norm Brand and I and... I was there. And then Squires. Yeah. Squires, right. Um, and we met in Washington to play. Yes. In that awful hotel where you where froze to death. Froze to death. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely froze to death. You came in late, as I recall. Uh, that I don't remember, but yeah. And that, yeah, uh, that was quite an accomplishment because nobody had ever run one like that before. That was a very freshly fighting conference yeah. in the United States. And it was also incredible that the ALS put it on. Because they were pretty um, limited in their giving out workshops. Yeah, and I know you had trouble in the later years getting the one they Oh, yeah. You had to keep at it. Right. If you got they would do it for, me, for, it for some other asking. subjects very frequently, but they, they were very bad about wanting us to. But it worked well, I thought. We had a great group, and the list of people, there were there's still a fair number of people that were at that conference that made it their careers. There were a bunch that fell by the wayside or well. Yeah, but there are quite a few people who were at that conference who were still in the right. Yeah, so it was very good. We were in Chicago, and what I remember about that is Ralph taking us to the out to hear music and then running a block to catch a cab for us <laughs> just after heart surgery. Oh my. Yes, it was uh, just after heart surgery. Um, that one they, they appointed um, David Vernon of Iowa to be the chair. Now he's not a lead writing person. And it seemed like at the meetings, the only thing he really wanted to accomplish was to have Steve Burton of I Iowa. Remember. Book. He had written a book on legal reasoning. Mm -hmm. So after we assured him that that would be okay. Well, he spoke for Yes, he was oh. one of the first speakers. Um, he uh, basically turned it over to me to plan the rest. So we had yeah, an interesting group. Uh, Joe was on that program, and um, Professor White from Michigan was a keynote mm -hmm. speaker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that went over very big. It was, yeah, it was a nice job. It was a good conference. Yeah. That was when you and I got lost and never got to the LWI yeah. and know the little meeting where they were planning what they were going to do. That has been mercifully removed from my memory. You were going over it. The, the planning meeting for the Lego Writing Institute that, where that was going to be formed. And you two were walking and you missed the stoplight or something and lost the crowd. So that's where the Lego Writing Institute yeah, Did we end up at some small restaurant? That yeah, because, we, because we couldn't find them. Yeah. I guess I read <clears throat> Well, as you know, the standards have really done nothing to, for status or uh, security for the writing folks. And there was the one year, I can't remember which one it was, uh, where I was fortunate enough to meet up with a delegate from the Illinois Bar Association uh, to the ABA, and they were doing a revision of standards. Uh, and he and Gary Palm, who was a clinician at the University of Chicago, were on the board of the uh, Standards Committee. And I was able to draft, actually, a, a couple of provisions that they adopted. Uh, we thought, the deans, of course, were very upset. Uh, one of them, the wording, of course, could not be to, to grant tenure. Uh, that would, They couldn't go that far. But it was, you had to have conditions that were conducive to attracting and keeping quality with our teachers. And so that was an opening in the door having at least continuous contracts. And one of the deans that was at that meeting said, you know, who next? The, the uh, janitors? And, yeah, you know, yeah. The slippery slope arguments came out in abundance from lawyers. And 
we thought that they, at the House of Delegates, they were going to um, uh, object. They passed it at the committee level, but we thought some of the deans would speak out against it. So we had organized this um, Tom Leahy, this person from Illinois, uh, and we chose Susan Brody to, to make the speech if necessary, and she did. And a couple of us were backups in case they responded negatively. And luckily they dropped it. They, so that was the first opening, and since then, they, um, in addition, they had the requirement of an upper level writing requirement, um, which Richard, I think, had, had a lot to do with as well. And so, they, you know, um, that has helped a lot. The school's been able to use that to get a little bit of standing for their programs and security for their faculty. Of course, the deans are pressing again to do away with those, as um, they are wanted to do want to throw that out, they claim it destroys innovation. Well, right. the school should be able to do what they like. Oh, that kind of innovation. That's not innovation. <laughs> so that's a, another battle that's going to be probably fought this year. I mean, if you met somebody as we did in a restaurant, and you knew who they were, but otherwise it was pretty hard. We, we did spend a lot of time on the phone. Yeah, uh, well, you, you've got the ALS um, section, but as you know, that, at that time it was primarily librarians. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to a couple of those before I was director of the program. Mm -hmm. When I started teaching in of course, it was in the 60s, and I went to a couple of those programs. Um, but. There was no way of knowing what other schools were doing, except yeah. by word of mouth. And we knew, I knew the people locally, but I didn't know the people throughout the country. Um, and then, of course, I found your book, which was, thank heavens, I found your book. Because <laughs> up until then, there was only Frank Cooper's writing in law practice. Yes. I forgot about him. Yes. Um, Weave Hoffman's book was a very good book, but it was not. It was meant for students. Yeah, it was it was a very good writing book, but not for students. I can't remember when I met you, but I do remember that on shortly after that occasion, a group of us went to the balcony of a hotel where we had huge ice cream sundaes, and we <laughs> shared one, and we couldn't finish it. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting how so much it focuses on food. <laughs> it's it food. It See, I know I met you at a restaurant and it was for breakfast and it was a brunch. <laughs> you want to eat meat, margarine, or go to a restaurant? <laughs>